Snowy owls are returning to the Cape, a shuttered motel hopes to reopen, and we take a look back at 2016 with Margot Weber, chair of the Barnstable School Committee. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, December 19th, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Attention bird lovers, snowy owls are making their way back to Sandy Neck Beach. The first snowy owl to visit was spotted last Tuesday. Sandy Neck staff lovingly named the bird Cutie Pie. If you head out to try and spot the beautiful bird yourself, remember to always stay a respectful distance away from wildlife like snowy owls and never walk in the dunes. Owners of the Craigville Motel will ask the Board of Health to allow them to reopen. The motel was forced to close in 2015 for health code violations and for housing long-term tenants. The board will also discuss town regulations and policies regarding lifeguards at swimming pools. The Board of Health meets to, uh, tomorrow at 3 in the Town Hall hearing room. Well, 2016 is almost over and we reflect on the year that was with Barnstable School Committee Chair Margot Weber. You're watching Barnstable this morning. Joining me now is, of course, School Committee Chair Margo Weber. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I uh, want to talk a little bit about, uh, we're nearing the end of the year. I cannot believe we're nearing the end of 2016, but we're nearing the end of the year. So I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a year in review with you and, and talk about some of the major things that the School Committee worked on this year. Great, and thank you so much for this opportunity because I'm sure the same way with other t operations, we never stop to think and look at the accomplishments that we've had. We're always looking at the next goal. So it was really nice to sit down and go through um, what has actually happened in the district over the last year. Yeah, it's true. It's interesting. Uh, sometimes you don't get that chance to, to reflect. Yeah. And you guys did a lot of work last year. A big transitions really took place last year. Yes, that was um, probably the major, our major milestone was the transition in leadership. And I'm not, don't know how if all the people of Barnstable appreciate the strength of the leaders that have, have come to this district. Um, our last three superintendents have won the President's Award from the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents. Um, so we were really trying to build on the good work that's been going on and, and maintain some type of consistency. So I think one of the best decisions that we made was to um, engage Mr. Butler as our interim superintendent and just continue the work of the district while we did our superintendent search. And um, you really, that was, you guys made a point as a, as a school committee not to rush the process. Yes. And I think that was really important in, in, trans, in the transition. It was. I think, it, like I said, it kept things at a steady pace. We can, got to continue the work um, with various initiatives that were going on. Um, just to, you need to be able to do something for a certain amount of time to figure out if it works. And a lot of times initiatives were changing and we just thought it was very important to be able to, to maintain our programs while we looked for a leader that would make them stronger. And I think that um, was a great, we had a great opportunity in hiring Meg Mayo Brown, who as a result of the schedule, we actually contracted her a year ago today. Wow, that's <laughs> so, amazing. Yeah. And um, so she had the entire first part of the year to kind of um, spend some time in the district without being here full time to get to visit the schools and get to know our leadership staff and our teachers and our community before jumping on board fully um, July 1st. Well, and that shows a lot of commitment too on her part uh, yes. because she was also a uh, superintendent in Fall River, I believe, yes. right? So, yes. uh, and looking for a house here at the same time and, you know, enrolling her son at Barnesville yes. High School. So, um, there, she had a lot going on, but really, um, made, a, made an effort and made a point of, um, transitioning and easing the transition into, um, our district. And with the sudden loss of Mr. Butler, who, which was a tremendous loss to, to us all. Um, and we would not have been able to do the last year that we did um, without him, um, with the support of our staff. Um, the time that she had to transition in was really, really a blessing. I think. Yeah, 
Absolutely. So. Um, you know, some of the other successes that we've seen in the district, uh, we have seen great progress being made at Hyannis West. Yes, they um, were named a level one school this year. Now what As does that mean, level it one? It is, um, they actually achieved that standard. There are five levels um, that the state determines of school in school accountability and it's level one through five. If you're level five, you're about to be taken, you could be taken over by, um, by the state. Level one shows that you are, um, your students are achieving growth, growth in their scores. They are, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a measure of achievement. Wow. And it's, for us, it's not just the test scores, but we really need to acknowledge the work that the principal, Kathy Amato, and the staff at that school have put in to really increase the performance and increase the growth of their students regardless of what the, what the test scores are. It's nice to have it acknowledged, yes. um, like officially, but, um, but we know what's going on at that school and they're yeah, making so tremendous strides. And they have a lot of um, challenging students there, and, uh, and, but they also have an incredible, incredible staff. Yeah, wonderful so. to see such great things happening uh, here in the community. I've always said uh, Barnesville Public Schools. I don't know that uh, here in town if we really truly know how blessed we are to have uh, the school system that we do. Um, but we have a really, really great school system. So to see that school, you know, performing so well, uh, despite many challenges. Right, is, is and it's, really it, you know, it's what we're looking to do is like focus our resources where, um, where they do the most good and where they're, where they're most needed. And that is true throughout the district. Yeah, so a great year uh, behind us and lots of work moving forward. So I know there's been a couple things that, uh, that have been um, sort of debated and discussed. Uh, looking at school start times. So uh, the school committee has a subcommittee. We Talk about that. Yes, we have, um, and I would like to thank, uh, it's Chris Joyce and Stephanie Ellis are the two school committee members that are on the committee that's looking at school start times. And then we have various community members, staff members. Um, it's a cross section of people involved in who be impacted by this decision. Um, I don't know what their conclusion is going to be because they are still working on it. Um, we did just engage a consultant and they just got the report. We actually have just extended the time for them to report back to the full school committee. But I can tell you there are a lot of moving parts to any decision regarding school start time and that this committee is looking at all of them and because we wouldn't want to to make any changes that aren't going to be the best thing for our families and our students in the community. Absolutely, and it is such a big change that just like hiring a new superintendent, you want to take your time. Yes, we want to make sure we slow. do it right. If yeah. we're going to do it, we want to make sure we do it right. So, um, Another thing that, that the school committee is working on right now, the, you guys just recently held a workshop, going over Barnstable High School schedules again. Yes. So uh, this may, uh, the goal I think here is to allow students to take advantage of more electives. Yes, we're looking to add another block in the schedule and also to um, add semesterized courses and really basically just to expand the offerings and to um, to have our students have be able to have more choices and also to have our incredibly talented staff um, maybe uh, be able to teach classes that they've wanted to teach for a while. Yeah, so. and you know, I, I, we actually recently had a discussion about this issue with uh, Brunswick High School Principal Patrick Clark and talking a lot about how, um, you know, sometimes electives are the most fun things that kids can take a, a part in. You in don't know high where school. they're going to lead you. Yeah. And I think, too, it really can excite them about education and school in general. Yes. So I think really important to keep them engaged and um, excited about learning. Yes, and also to make sure that we are offering the full range of classes to help our students succeed, whether it be um, in career or in college and wherever life takes them. Well, great. Thank you so much for stopping by this morning. Really excited to talk about all of the work that you guys accomplished. Some big changes happened uh, last yes. year uh, and amazingly went very smoothly. Yep. So congratulations to you and uh, thanks for sort of running uh, through the year with us and uh, looking to the future as well. well. Thanks for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. Thanks. My um, guest this morning, of course, a Barnstable School Committee Chair Margo Weber. So much more to come on Barnstable this morning. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Police Chief Paul McDonald. We'll talk with Com Fire Chief Michael Wynn about ice safety. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.